Oh no! Check out my files! I've been encrypted! How'd that happen? Oh no, it looks like... Oh, oh I don't know how many of these have been gotten. Oh no, it looks like ransomware. How the heck did I get that? Uh, I'm not going to be able to open that. Oh, I've lost it. Oh, gee. If you want to know why, how, stay tuned after this message. Today we're going to look at the Phobos virus ransomware. This ransomware, I'm not going to go through just yet how it gets onto your machine. I've already done that and this will be part of this video anyway. But I'm going to assume we already know that. This thing gets in because it knows your password. That's right, your password is out there on some list and the person knows your password and has come in via remote desktop and got onto your machine. I can prove this because in the event log, the person comes in through remote desktop and they have no failed logons, they log on first time, correct password every time. So let's start with your password, shall we? That's how this hack begins. Well, this one starts off easy enough. Check your password. See if it's been owned. See if it's part of a big hack. So type in your email address here, and then push the button and see what comes up. Oh no, so I put my email address in, click the uh, button, and this is what came up. I've been owned. Look at this. I've been done by Adobe, I'm part of Collection One, part of Creatives Leak, I've got Dropbox, I've got LinkedIn. Oh my goodness, what do I do next? Next thing to do is to go to the Passwords tab, and on there type in your password. Oops. Oh no, my password, which is unique to me, no one else will have it, that's also been done. Alright, so we first of all look through the file system and we find the file that was edited first. In this case, it was around about 2.19 to 2.25 a.m. in the morning when this business is not even open for business. From there, we go through and I happen to come across in the event log. If you go into the security log, you will find a special logon occurred at around about 2.19 in the morning when this business was closed. From here, I now need to work out how this logged in. I happen to know the session type was session 3, which led me to believe it was RDP. From the RDP logon, the person had the administrator password for the local machine and was able to log on. So from the event log, I was then able to see underneath the Microsoft Windows Terminal Services Local Session Manager Operational, a logon ID of type 3 from an IP address, which I then traced to be across in America, and then a second one across to Russia. And there I could see a remote desktop session logon was successful. So someone has remoted in. This is backed up by the Terminal Services printers that they've got installed at their end. They had mapping turned on and it tried to map their printers and it failed. And we have a record of that here. Again, in the event log, this time we are underneath Terminal Services printers, or you can find the same information out looking in the system or application logs. And we notice that they logged off at 5.07. So what were they doing between 2.19 and 5.07, and why did it take them so long? Obviously they came in through a remote desktop, and this is where the password came in handy, so you want to block those remote desktop ports. But what were they doing in that time on this machine? So the hacker then transferred executable viruses and files from their local machine using the clipboard and placed them onto the remote machine that they had hacked into. They placed it into the My Music folder 
and also into the redirected my documents. They also copied it into Dropbox. Later on, the redirected files and virus got stored in offline files in the PC, made it very difficult to remove it. They then placed a 17 kilobyte specific k.txt file into the Windows syswell64 directory then they double clicked and ran exec.exe which is the virus executable with elevated permissions this is where it failed and it would not run in fact it got removed by the antivirus and deleted this is why it took so long for them to be on this session is because they couldn't get this virus to run they tried and tried and tried again at 2.30 a.m. they were recorded as messing around with the NTFS streams and they crashed trend. They crashed trend several times and trend recovered several times. They then tried to uninstall trend. This also failed. They tried to remove trend numerous other ways. Trend also showed that it removed the executable 17 times. So 17 times they placed it back up there through the clipboard and 17 times it got deleted. It must have been a fun tag of war for the uh, hacker. They then rebooted the PC and made some edits to the firewall. They still could not get their executable to run. No matter how hard they tried, Trend kept knocking it out. They had to kill Trend. And that is why they were logged on between 2.19 and 5.07 for such a length of time. They were battling with the antivirus installed on the actual system. They then downloaded their hacking kit. This contained many antivirus tool uninstallers. In the end, they uploaded and installed IO Unlocker and attacked Trend one final time. This killed Trend and got it to unload. They then reran the executable, which went to an IP address on port 80 in California and checked it could reach Google. Then, after it had done its job, the ransom note popped up. On the desktop is IOBit Unlocker, a tool used for unlocking files that are locked in memory. This tool had been freshly installed. This was not a tool that the client normally uses. Then there was a folder underneath uh, with the iTunes folder, which contained a folder called New Folder. And inside that new folder were a whole heap of uninstallers and tools and various bits and pieces. So this is how they got around the locally installed antivirus and they came prepared to knock any, any antivirus pretty much on the head and then get their product on there and installed. After successfully running, you get a pop-up that uses the HTA engine to bring up a message saying all of your files have been encrypted and giving you a ransom note. If you go into the startup group of the Windows Start menu, you'll find data.hta in there, which is going to trigger every time this machine is logged on with this profile. If you have a look in the file system, you'll also see an encrypted.txt file that contains a warning that all the files have been encrypted and to contact the people to pay the ransom. So we run the executable through virus total and here we see we have 50 engines have detected this straight away, almost all of them. We've got lots of names there we can Google and from those names we can obviously figure out what other people are saying about it. In the details there's not a lot about this particular thing, it's a PS exec file. There's not much else you can tell about this executable. Something's a bit funny about this executable. The behavior opens k.txt which we know about but there's not much else reported on and the only other report on here is actually one by myself. Um, that's from the hybrid analysis. So if we then go across to the hybrid analysis and we scroll down, we'll scroll down through it, um, you can see it's treated as malicious. Yes, well, we know that. You can see what it basically does. It's got some strange PE headers. You can see what makes up the PE header and the actual executable data, how much is text, how much is resources. You can see also what it imports, any screenshots, which in this case is just a black screen. And then as we go down, we can see network analysis that it does actually make a query off to Google, um, probably just to check to see if the internet is available. And that's the only host it contacts. And then you can go through and look at the various strings that are in the bits and pieces that spit out of this executable file. Here I've opened PE view to have a look inside the actual virus itself. Um, I've noticed straight away there doesn't seem to be a lot of subroutines and things like that. Um, there's not a lot of clues in this executable to tell us what it does. The other thing I noticed, if I use the identification tool to identify the PE header, PEID, 
and I open up that same virus you'll notice it's not really defined it doesn't really know what packed this executable it doesn't quite understand what it is so this is a real mystery this executable if you happen to find that you do have this on your machine and you do wish to find out what it is doing this tool here is process hacker it allows you to locate something you wish to find out more information on and you can even right click and create a dump file from it the other thing I recommend doing as well especially if you're a member of the bleeping community uh, bleeping computer community I should say is to run the Farbar recovery scan tool and do a full scan and record everything you can including shortcuts and everything else dump out the files and sanitize them if you must and upload them into the forum In addition, if you have the virus on your machine, you can fire up Wireshark and Wireshark sync to all the network interfaces. You will actually see it go out to Google. Um, I assume, assuming that's just so that the virus knows you have an internet address and that you are live. So you can go out to Google. You can also run process monitor from Sys internals. And here is my monitoring of this actually running. So exec.exe comes up checks out that k.x text file sorry k.txt file and then cancels its processes and fails to run further in this case we have had people actually send an email to the author and this is the response telling them that uh, it costs lots of money um, obviously three thousand dollars is quite a bit payment for six hours blah 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 you can read that for yourself but it's quite a, a bad little amount of money there Taking that file, which we know has a strange PE header, and putting it through IDA and decompiling it and trying to turn it into pseudocode, uh, the first problem that we have is there's not any functions in this PE file. So at this point, we've actually established that we can't convert it out to pseudocode, so we can't read what's in this XE file. Um, we believe the k.txt file, which is 17 bytes in size, is deliberately created at a certain size with a key in it to unencrypt the exec.exe file before it runs. If you don't have that k.txt file, then it doesn't decompile and doesn't run in memory. Because at the moment we're looking at the compiled code and we don't run the k.txt through it, then at this point in time we can't decompile to have a look at it. Here we have a little test that I ran to see what that uh, IP address, address was that it's trying to query. And of course it's come back with the style sheet for google.com. Here we have the logs on the server and on the workstation showing the exec.exe file being deleted each time the person runs it. So as you can see they had quite a battle. Here we go at 247 and 228. They tried to run this virus numerous times. Here's an explanation here that possibly the Phobos backend, the people who receive the bitcoins and have the email addresses, are currently disabled due to the ecstatic takedown. So there was a hacking group taken down and that hacking group does appear to contain the hackers from behind this particular ransomware. Here we have the code again ripped out trying to work out what's inside this PE file. Um, it's a no known PE uh, style so it's been compressed and encrypted somehow. And here is the inside of the code where as we can see it's looking for the k.txt file. If the file is not of a specific size with a specific content then it just exits out and doesn't run. So if you don't have the k.txt file, then you're completely safe because the virus will not run. And that's it. From a stolen password through to a remote desktop, to getting access to your machine, to running an executable on it, to fighting with your antivirus, to running the executable, to encrypting your machine, to holding it a ransom. That's the whole Phobos from beginning to end. Hope that's revealed some secrets for you. Hasta la vista, baby. That malware's out of here. So are you. But if you want to stick around, next video, subscribe, comment, ring the bell.